I'm Paul Cleary, Senior Ecosystem Architect at Benefy. In just a moment, I'm going to describe the certificate lifecycle from beginning to end, but for that to make sense and to give you a bit more context, let me summarize what TLS certificates are and what they're used for. In today's digital age, machines are everywhere. Machines are responsible for mass transit and commerce, airlines, huge ships, and high-speed rails. Machines provide our banking and our financial infrastructure, our retail infrastructure, our medical infrastructure. They provide our entertainment. They provide our connection to friends and family. Machines are the devices you're watching this video on, and also the code behind all the software applications from my recording and editing to your watching on YouTube in a browser or through an app on your phone. All those machines are becoming more and more connected to make our lives easier. But how can we trust that those connections aren't malicious, intercepting our passwords when we're using public Wi-Fi or injecting malware into the software applications that we use? The answer is machine identities or TLS certificates. Certificates act as electronic credentials that certify the identities of servers, VMs, running code, and all the other machines that might exist in the network. They're issued by recognized certificate authorities and function similarly to identification cards like passports and driver's license. However, like your driver's license, all digital certificates have a finite lifespan, which has continued to shrink over the past several years. Shorter lifespans are great because it means it's harder for hackers to get their hands on valid certificates, but it also means they become more burdensome to manage without the right tools in place. When expired or misconfigured certificates are left unmanaged, costly outages occur. This creates the need for a control plane for those machine identities, which can automate the entire lifecycle and ensure that certificates are replaced before they expire, preventing service disruption, decreased security, and loss of revenue. And so imagine you want to get a digital certificate to secure your web application. You'd need to provide some type of information about yourself and your app to a certificate authority or a CA which will verify your identity and permissions and, if all is well, issue that certificate. This is the enrollment stage of the certificate lifecycle. Next, you'd need to install that certificate on your web server hosting your app so that it can be used to secure traffic. If you're in a large organization and your application has lots of visitors, that certificate might be installed to a web application firewall or a load balancer. This stage is referred to as provisioning or distribution but ultimately it just means getting your certificate to all the places that it needs to be. Okay, great. Your app is up and running, serving visitors and all is well. Now, depending on your CA, your company's security policy and the date that you're watching this video, the lifetime of your certificate could be as long as a year or as short as a week. In fact, we're starting to even see shorter lifespans down to a few hours in certain cases where applications are being continuously deployed. In any case, it's time for the renewal stage, where you've got some questions to consider. Do you allow reuse of the same private key or create a new key pair? How are you going to redistribute that renewed certificate to all the different endpoints and identities that we identified earlier? This is where a control plan for machine identities could help. So at this point, your app has been running for a while now. One day you get an alert from your security team an unknown entity has gained access to the server hosting your application. Now, it doesn't look like they were able to access any sensitive information, but it's better to err on the side of caution in this situation. It's time to revoke that certificate and issue a new one. This ensures that even if the attacker did manage to exfiltrate your certificate and private key, they're now useless. Your app and your users are still secure using the renewed certificate. The final stage of the certificate's lifecycle is destruction. Perhaps your app is going through a rebrand and the name is going to be changing slightly. Your application's original certificate may still be valid for a number of months, even though it's no longer going to be used. As a best practice, you should proactively revoke and then destroy the certificate to prevent any possible misuse or compromise. And that's it. I mentioned a minute ago that a control plane for machine identities can help automate renewals and redistribution, but it can really help with all the other stages as well. A robust control plan provides complete automation from the initial enrollment to renewal and provisioning, all the way through revocation and destruction, even warning you of potential risks at every stage of the certificate's lifecycle. Thanks for watching.